There are times I feel the shiver and cold It only happens when I'm on my own But in the sun I'm never alone So sun, take me home To the Father I don't want another be formed in me So I can see the joy in the Father's face Son, take me home I perish with hunger I just want the Father I have been in such a far place Son, take us home There's a whole nother feast going on In a parallel universe Between the Father and His Son It's a feast happening before time The Father's feasting with His own kind And He's looking for His Son to feast with us so son take us home to the father I don't want another be formed in us so we can see the joy in his face son take us home we perish with hunger we just want the Father. We have been in such a far place. Son, take us home. Take us home. Take us home. Keeps me on my toes. I didn't know there's going to be an obstacle course. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> go ahead and start your equipment. And if you would turn with me to First Corinthians chapter eleven, <clears throat> verse twenty-three. First Corinthians eleven verse 23 through 26. And again, I want you to, to look carefully. This is Jesus um, being quoted here, um, or Paul saying, this is what I received of the Lord in verse 23. <clears throat> so he's saying, he's talking to the people that are having communion and that there's trouble at the table. And he's saying, look, this is what I've got from the Lord. This is how I saw what the Lord was saying, okay? So I'm going to share it with you. For Verse 23, for I've received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, okay, so he's making a point of the betrayal um, not, you know, that will lead to the cross, but he's making a point that this is what I have received, not the story, but the truth that lies within this. All right, so let's just read. That the, the, that the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. Okay? So the same night that he was betrayed He's breaking bread and saying, this is my body, and this guy right here is going to see to it. He's not condemning. 
And he's saying, I want you to eat this. I want you to be with me in this. I want you to commune in selfless giving with me. I want you to follow, to, to not just follow me, but to partake of this spirit of my broken body right here in the midst of this and how, and how it's coming down and to see that I'm not being murdered, I'm giving myself. And, mo you know, in almost any situation, you know, we can either be murdered or we can be a, a, a sacrifice, a living sacrifice. We, it all depends on our attitude. And so, so Jesus, so Paul is saying, I believe this is what Jesus is trying to get us to do in the midst of betrayal. So let's read on. Verse 24 now. And when he had given thanks, he break it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this is the cup of, uh, is, uh, this cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Okay, notice, if you have a King James Bible, notice the word show. What, do you, what comes to your mind when you say show bread? Show bread. That that bread was on that table and was speaking to the priests, which were all supposed to be priests, speaking to them of something and it had a hidden meaning it was from what was your song another realm or something like that <laughs> a parallel, you know and uh yeah a parallel universe that is not the same anyway um but this is not spooky and weird like that this is <laughs> just kidding just kidding <clears throat> For as oft as you drink it, you do show forth the Lord's death. He didn't say you show forth his victory. He didn't say you show forth his, his resurrection. He said, until he comes, you have a responsibility to show forth the kind of death that he died. Take this and eat it. Amen. So, I mean, the question, you know, comes, what are you showing forth? What are you communing with him? What are you remembering of him? And I'll even say, eat betrayed bread. People are going to betray you. People are going to do things. You're going to be hurt. You're going to be, you know, all, all this kind of stuff. The world is full of it. It's full of it. The, here's, the, here's the big secret. You're not the only one who's going through stuff. Everybody is, is betrayed or everybody is rejected or everybody is hurt. We're supposed to be different. And the difference is this spirit. Amen. Where we bless, Jesus said, bless those who curse you. He didn't say get back at them. He said, turn the other cheek. He said, pray for those who are despitefully using you. All right. So <clears throat> let me read some of my notes here. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians eleven seventeen that this supper was to be done in remembrance of him. What does that mean? Does it mean that in our minds we are to, what does it mean, this communion? What are we supposed to remember? Does it mean in our minds we are to hearken back 2,000 years to remember the Jesus of the Gospels? Does it does its only meaning involve our remembrance that Jesus died so I would not have to go to hell? Okay, guess what? That's a whole lot of people's. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say some stuff here that's gonna be in the notes anyway. That's the Passover. That's not the Lord's Supper. What do you mean? What do you mean? What are you talking about? The Passover was to rejoice over and eat that in remembrance of a victory that they escaped. Right? But this is a celebration of victory that 
Jesus gave himself willingly and didn't escape. Still glad you came? <laughs> we'll re read on, brother. Okay, I will. Uh, no, by, all me by means of the broken bread and poured out wine, we are to remember Jesus. Jesus in his extreme selflessness, in totally giving himself for others. That's what we're supposed to be remembering. Okay? Uh, but we are to not only remember it, we are to partake of that same body and spirit. We are to put it in us and in this manner commune with him in it. This is how you commune. This is communion. Communion is not just eating, you know, drinking a little juice, <laughs> eating a wafer or something. You know, this is communion. All right. So <clears throat> my next title under here is one of my main ones, and it's a little bit. The Lord's Supper or Passover, I want to try to draw the line so that we can see the difference. <clears throat> at first communion service, Jesus and his disciples celebrated it exactly at the same time the Jews were celebrating the Passover, right? Historically, I'm talking about, okay? Um, but this was not Passover that Jesus was celebrating with his disciples. It was the table of the Lord. It was the table of the Lord. How many Christians enter into the Lord's Supper or Passover primarily as a feast, primarily as a feast to celebrate their deliverance from sin, punishment, and hell? At the very same moment of Passover, Jews all over the world rejoiced over their deliverance from Egypt. Is that not true? Absolutely. All right? But both Jews and Christians alike miss the greater significance of partaking of the lamb, the Passover lamb. It was a lamb that laid down its life. We totally miss the, the, what we're fellowshipping in. We're celebrating a lamb that didn't escape but literally was so unselfish that he took on what we should have. And he tells us, you be just like me, you, but not be like me. Let my, yeah, let me be in you, but not just let me be in you, because every Christian has him in there. Let me be in you as lamb. <clears throat> so I wrote, um, we are not simply called upon to partake of Jesus but of Jesus the lamb. At Passover, the Jews did not eat beef or chicken, but ate God's best symbol that represents his selfless son. Amen? I mean, if you just look at the symbol and you can see the very nature of that thing. So the Lord's Supper is different from Passover. You ever heard that taught before, anybody? Because usually they say it's just the, it's the fulfillment of it, but it's, it's different because they celebrated deliverance and we celebrate a nature that doesn't run but gives itself. <clears throat> so the Lord's Supper is different from Passover. At that Passover, Jesus celebrated his death. The same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread and he, <laughs> and he said, this is who I am. Put it in you. I don't have enough time because we're 20 minutes. I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, yes, Doug Fisher. Uh, he showed it forth. He showed it forth. Amen. This is what you do. You show it forth. Yeah. This is my body. This is, this is it. This is what it's about right here. He showed it forth in symbolism. Instead of being about escaping, it was about giving of self. This was the Lord's, this was the first Lord's Supper and the pattern for all to come. Praise God. Anybody, have, do you ever feel like you, you learn something and you realize the whole time you've been doing it wrong? <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so the very night and moment the Jews celebrated the Passover, Jesus sat down with his disciples and explained his meaning of the ritual. There was no mention of, get ready, there was no mention of eternal life, just lamb life. There was no mention of eternal life. This wasn't about saving us. Okay, let me read on. There was no celebration over Israel being liber liberated from Rome or its enemies. None of that was there. Um, while partaking, the disciples were not reflecting on the deliverance Jesus would bring to those who believed upon him. He didn't bring, he didn't bring it up in that spirit. It wasn't about deliverance. It was about self-giving. This is my body. This is my blood poured out. This is my self -giving. Eat this spirit. Not, not, you know, go out and tell everybody that you can be saved. Isn't that interesting? That those really elements that we all read into it are not the primary thing he's trying to communicate. Um... There was none of that. Instead, the primary focus of Jesus was these two elements represent me and my selfless giving. Put it inside of you and have it one toward another. All right, this ritual we celebrate today is a reenactment of the Last Supper and what Jesus sought to communicate there. This cup and bread are not primarily seeking to bring his death near to our remembrance, but the selfless spirit in which he gave himself in that death. And knowing full well, this is where, what's going to happen. Jesus isn't going, I'll be delivered. He's going to be crucified. This guy that is one of his best disciples is going to see to it. And he's saying, see this broken body that's going to come about as a result of this? Put this in you. Be, be with, not just with me, be of me. Don't be of the world. Don't be of religion. Be with me. Our celebration and rejoicing at taking the Lord's Supper should not primarily be over the fact that the Lamb of God shed his blood and gave his body so that we would not have to go to hell. The greatest joy and celebration should be over the fact that we have been graced to become partakers of the divine nature. Let us take these elements in remembrance of him who lives in us of him who was given to us not given on the cross given to us so that we could be given. All right, what, how much time have I got? Okay, good. I got one final section, and it's called Examine Yourself. In light of what? Okay. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 30. <clears throat> Let me just read it because we're running out of time. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took also the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft, often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death. Till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and of the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat then, basically, then so let him eat of the bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body, which we're supposed to be and act like and function by. And you are not discerning that. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. All right, so examine yourselves in light of, uh, in light of his selflessness in his death. Examine yourselves in light of being the body of that kind of person. <sighs> See, 
what do we do? We, we start examining, we start looking here. It says, examine yourself. And we go, did I sin? Am I evil? Did I do something wrong? We get a, it's all inward on us instead of examine ourselves in light of communion, in light of the Lord's Supper, in light of the Lord who gave himself and this whole spirit of what's going on here. Um, uh, and then in, uh, examine yourself in light of having lamb inside of you because you did eat communion there, you know. All right, so final paragraph, I think, three minutes. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the bread and wine are memorials of Jesus' death on the cross. While Jesus was eating Passover with his disciples, he took some bread and said, this is my body given for you, do in remembrance of me. It was a given body, a broken body. He's, he's saying, you're my body, basically. This proves it. This proves you're my body because you let me live out of you to turn the other cheek or to bless, not just to turn the other cheek and go, God will get you. That was wrong. You're wrong. Everything's wrong. But to bless, to bless and to curse not. I am just telling you what a blessing to have his life be able to come out of us. What a privilege. <clears throat> it is a given body, a broken body. It was given for others. His, his was given for others, us. His body, his spirit and nature is giving in us for others. Um, if you want to check that out, you can see that online on my recent blog because that was the ex exact very subject that I was on there. <clears throat> um, this was contrary to those in 1 Corinthians 11 that took the meal because of their own hunger or apart from the rest of believers. Instead of doing it in remembrance of Jesus, they did it based on focusing upon their own needs above that of others. They then were not doing it in remembrance of his body and being his body, you understand? In remembrance of we are his body, I eat that and I make that my identity. Does that make sense? I mean, you know, I eat that and I make that my identity. Therefore, Christ lives in me, but not Christ. We ate lamb at Passover, so that life and that nature and that spirit can reach out to the people that, you know, you can say to the hurting, the hurting are the people that feel like they have to hurt. <laughs> and that feel like there's some victory in hurting someone else. And you, we can take those blows like Jesus because it is Jesus. And he's the only one who could do it because it must be Christ in us because we're not that way. Hallelujah. I mean, what just... My God, communion, what a, what a reality. Not Passover. They then were not doing it in remembrance of his body and are not discerning the spirit in which he gave himself properly and not discerning his body, that we are his body, that we are the body of that. Can you see the disciples sitting there? Of course, of course they're on this long table, of course, you know just worked out for the for the artist you know anyway this long table of, of the the last supper and you know they're all sitting there and he he's talking about this spirit that they didn't have but he wants them to have because he wants that to be their communion not this that they're doing and so he he's he's meticulously spells it out the same night that you he knew when he was going to be betrayed. He knew it was coming. And so he, he speaks of, this wasn't broken by them. This was given for you. This was given for you. I do this for you. Now, pass this down, fellas. And let's, let's fellowship. Let's fellowship. Amen? All right. That's all I'm going to share tonight. So let's pray. 
Lord, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. And I, I thank you for the Holy Spirit that helps us to see the true issues of your heart and not just the events or the symbols or all the things that, that can distract us or that can make us focus on and, and, and make, make the minors major and the majors minor because we don't see your heart. But I thank you that it is written and it is there for us to grasp just as it was for those original 12. And that we can be like the 12 and that we're sitting here hearing you, not a preacher, but hearing your voice. And, and we want to not be Judas. We want to eat of that same spirit. And Lord, we know that they basically all but John were martyred, were given, were gave themselves. And Peter was not worthy to hang on the cross the same direction. Even if it's just stories passed down, we know that spirit got into the 12 and moved out from them and came to us eventually. And we don't want to just be Christian in name and we don't want to just be religious. We want your father, your lamb in us. We want that spirit. We want, and we want to be the body of that Jesus, that Jesus, the lamb of God, the one that you exalted to the throne, the one that you were pleased with because of the selflessness, the degree, the measure, the measure, oh, the measure, beyond measure. You gave him the spirit beyond measure, without measure. And we don't have that, but we have him. And the spirit, we, we know, Lord, don't we know that when the spirit comes down upon us in such grand measure, it's not us, it's him. And we take the credit for it and we call it the anointing when it is the spirit exalting this beautiful son, your son, Father. And so we, we admit that we're so very, very, very shameful and, and, and Lord, have, have so much junk working in us that is so contrary. How, how will we ever, ever come to such a place? And Father, the answer is we will never, but we can eat him, we can eat of him, we can partake Oh, hallelujah, of the divine nature. And we can allow him not just control. Lord, we, we may be controlling, but our problem is not control. Our problem is it's not him. And that's just as bad as if we weren't controlling and it still wasn't him. So, Father, we... We want to say yes to what your spirit's trying to do. Not, what, not just yes to the words or the teaching, to the preacher or to the sermon or whatever. We want to say yes to what the spirit has brought us of the communion table, of the table of showbread. And we want to act like priests instead of just Christians trying to live for God in the earth. We want to, we want to eat of that, that table table of the Lord. And we wanted to work in us, Lord. Oh, it's a wonderful thing, Father, to hear it and to say, yes, Lord, as we pray. But Father, to be able to be put into those situations and instead of calling up all the evil that is around us and the world is full of it and there is much evil around us even even um, in within Christians around us there's so much wrong but Lord who cares you told you well, you told Peter you know to forget about John you worry about yourself <laughs> father father um, I don't want to be caught up in what's wrong. I want to be caught up in you, not what's right. It's not good and evil, not right and wrong. It's the wrong tree, and we keep eating of that, and we keep feeding on that, and we refuse the tree of life, the cross. 
We, we love to hear of it. We love to hear it from you, Holy Spirit. But it has no power in us if we cannot commune with you, Jesus, in this. It has no power. It is powerless. Ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Father, I just pray that you will in your glorious, sweet Son, by this means, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and you've given us this day our daily bread. You will deliver us from evil, because then thine will be the kingdom, the government within us, and the power over our selfish ways and thoughts and the glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.